Now the show's about to start, so just sit there, be very still and try to be quiet. OK, Darren, and then when it's over, can we go back to lasering noobs? Patience, young Padawan. Patience. <sighs> Say, Darren, were you just talking to that model of yourself? <clears throat> Roll titles! I think he was. Welcome to Good Games Spawn Point, the show for younger gamers by gamers. I'm Hex. And I'm Bajo. And I am Darren. Who's your little friend, Darren? That's Derp. Derp? Oh, you gave him a name. That's so cute. <laughs> well, coming up on the show this week, we'll be catching a fever. Football fever. The Rugby World Cup has kicked off and we'll be checking out the official game of the tournament. One for all you Bleach fans, Bleach Soul Resurrection. Cutting my laser. It's not just me, I, I'm not the only one that can hear that, right? Oh, it's definitely making some noises. Affirmative. Bleach Soul Resurrection. Re is that how you say it? Yeah, it? Bleach Soul Resurrection is the latest game set in the multi varied multiverse of Bleach, the hit series of comics and cartoons. Bleach is similar to Naruto in a lot of ways. There's lots of larger than life characters, phenomenal fights, but these heroes and villains aren't ninjas, they're samurai, which means they fight with swords. Yes. Each level puts you in control of Ichigo or one of his friends, such as Ishida, Rukia or Toshiro. Your objective? To defeat the traitorous Captain Aizen and all his fruity minions. The plot follows the story from the comics when Ichigo and his chums battle through a replica of their hometown after laying waste to the homeworld of the demonic hollows, the hellish Hueco Mundo. Hueco Mundo. Hueco Mundo. Sounds weird, doesn't it? Mm, Hueco Mundo. Hueco Mundo. And it looks weirder. A grey, desert-like nightmare universe. Featureless, save for the odd pillar or giant cube. Must have made things easy for the programmers. Quite you. Like in the Dragon Ball Z games, you really need vast in-game spaces in order to capture the style of combat from the cartoons. The Soul Reapers and Hollows of Bleach dash all over the place as they fight. The more elbow room, the better. The combat mechanics are really simple. You have your basic combo attacks, as well as some more powerful spirit attacks that drain your ever-regenerating spirit gauge. You battle endless numbers of generic hollows, as well as the odd boss. You can free aim, but the handy lock-on feature is pretty much essential for guiding your ranged attacks. The combos are super easy, often as simple as just pushing the square button four times in a row. The challenge lies in keeping track of where you and the enemies are, and just burning through the level as fast as you can. Because the combat itself is so simple, they've tried to create the illusion of depth through a character upgrade system. You can level up all your characters so you can mow through your mindless foes that little bit faster. There are also standalone challenge stages that give you something to do once you're done with the story mode. The cell shaded graphics suit the fast pace of play, but the character models are a little off. As for the animation, well, it just looks wrong. The PS3 hardware can do so much more. In all, there are just 19 playable characters, a far cry from the rosters on some of the Bleach games on the DS. There were 44 in Dark Souls. On top of all that, all the characters are essentially the same. Each has melee, ranged and power-up attack combos mapped to exactly the same buttons. Yet, despite the noob-friendly controls, they've really brought out the spirit of the characters. I particularly like playing Ishida. He can unleash his laser arrow attacks at a furious clip. Charging my longbow. Yeah, some bits were fun, but there's also some serious technical flaws. The loading screens were intolerably long for one thing. For a platform exclusive game, it feels really unoptimized. A hard drive install would have been nice as well, but no dice. The production values just felt really cheap as well. I mean, oh, that music, it's that same cheesy guitar synth from every El Cheapo Japanese game from the last decade. It sounds like someone's squashing an electric frog. Most of the cutscenes are just walls of text and the reward screen looks like a bus timetable. I mean, even when I got a good rank for a level, I just felt like I'd failed. As a consolation prize, they did include the option to play with Japanese audio and English subtitles. Some discerning fans prefer to watch their anime that way. But yes, the game was definitely missing something. Final thoughts? 
I'm quite a fan of anime and the crazy world of manga, and sometimes those spin-off games really work, but not in this case. The difficulty curve is inconsistent, the graphics are a bit off, and ultimately it's all just a bit unsatisfying. I think if you're a huge Bleach fan, it's something you might want to rent or borrow, but if you're not, then you're going to have a hard time having fun here. So I'm giving it 6 out of 10 rubber chickens. I felt let down too, Badge. I mean, in anime, a sword fight isn't just a clash of steel, it's a battle of wills, but in Bleach Soul Resurrection, it was a battle for me just to stay awake. But it's not awful, it just doesn't feel like fencing, more like flailing. I'm giving it 5 out of 10 rubber chickens. Hueco Mundo. Hueco Mundo. Hueco Mundo. Hueco Mundo. Resurrection. Hueco Mundo. Hueco Mundo. Hex here, bringing you the latest news from the Spawn Point News Desk. Well, it's not the desk bringing you the news, it's me, but anyway, here it is. Sony has confirmed that PlayStation 3 will never be able to support cross-game chat. Voice chat is not part of the PlayStation 3's operating system. For it to be able to work, the amount of memory available for games would have to be reduced, and that is not possible. Rumours are circulating that Nintendo planned to redesign the 3DS as early as next year. Sources revealed to French website 01net.com that the new unit will feature a second analogue stick as well as reduced emphasis on 3D and possibly a new name. The source further speculates that the recent price cut was an attempt to clear out current stock to make way for the new model. While it is just a rumour, the website has previously posted accurate specifications of both the Wii U and PlayStation Vita before they were officially announced. And that's the news for this week. Regular Spawnlings will know that lately we've been paying a visit to people who work in the games industry to find out what it took to get their jobs. Well, this week we visit one of the most talented and successful developers Australia has ever produced. My advice for anybody wanting to work in the games industry is just to play. Play video games, play board games, play sport. Just make play something part of everything you do every day. Except playing stupid, of course. The most successful and happy people in the gaming industry are the ones who are really passionate about games. It can be really hard work here sometimes, but a love of games will get you through it. I'm a game designer, and that means I come up with the ideas and, and finesse a lot of the games. More exactly, here at EA Firemint, I'm the design director, which means I'm in charge of all the other game designers here as well as, as doing the, kind of the game overviews. So I will look at all the game designs in the studio and make sure that everything's working well. The other designers will come to me, they'll ask advice when necessary. When I was a kid, I actually played a lot of sport. I, I played an occasional board game as well. I didn't really play that many computer games. Now, you could be a little unkind and say I'm a little bit too old to have been playing computer games because they didn't have computers back then, but, but we did. We had some Space Invaders machines and occasionally I'd get to those. But basically, I was a sports nut. I played a lot of football and a lot of cricket. And I used to like to mess with the rules in those games. Occasionally, I'd, I'd say to the guys at lunchtime, hey, why don't we play football today and all goals are worth 10 points and you lose a point every time you kick it behind. And it used to change the dynamics of the games. I guess you could say I've always been interested in designing games and changing up the gameplay, uh, which is kind of exactly what I do these days. As well as being a sports addict when I was a kid, I was also really a voracious reader. I, I just loved my books. And when I was about 14, 15, I was introduced to Lord of the Rings by my school principal. And I just fell in love with that book. I, I just, all of a sudden, I wanted to be an author. I just wanted to write books for the rest of my life. And then someone gave me a computer, and it kind of seemed natural at that stage to create a story in the computer. Uh, so it was, like, it was like writing a story, but it was a, it was a game. And I just started writing games, and Eventually, I wrote a game that was a hit game. Uh, it, it did really, really well, and that led right through, and I wrote games for about 10 years, right up to Puzzle Quest, which was a very big hit a few years ago. And now I've read a Firemint, of course, doing very cool games like Spy Mouse, where it's all just kind of led one thing to the other. An average day for me is really a bit of a surprise. I come into the office and I never quite know what's going to happen. I could come in expecting to be working on some level up tables, doing some formulas and spreadsheets, and I'll find that someone said, hey, uh, we need a pitch for this game, so I'll have to go ahead and write a bit of a pitch. Then I'll maybe go and work with a few teams and a few meetings, discuss what's going on with the games, have a look at a few features, see how they're panning out, tinker with a few things. About how much longer are we looking at to get this done? Going to hope to block it out in the next few days. A few days, so, okay. yeah. great, that's brilliant. Pretty much every day is a whole bundle of excitement. 
There's two really fun parts to my job. One is that kind of blue sky period at the start where anything's possible. You can just start going crazy ideas and putting crazy things together and coming up with ideas for the game. The most fun is when you see people actually playing your game after the game's finished and they're having fun with it. That's just, that's fantastic. And there's a lot of hard work in the middle there and of course some of that hard work is the bit that's not so fun and there's a lot of paperwork to be written. Some days it's a lot like doing homework but a bit like in the end how homework pays off when you get a good job, in the, the homework pays off and we get a cool game at the end of it. It's really important to specialise if you want to get into the games industry. There are probably two main paths into the industry, one is a programmer, one is an artist. As a programmer, you want to make sure you've studied well, you've done some maths, some computer science, gone to a university, got a good degree, maybe have a little portfolio of games you've worked on in your spare time to show, and that'll stand you in good stead for a job. As an artist, it's a little bit different. You maybe want to get a bit of formal art training, perhaps at a, a college of some sort. You want to put together a killer portfolio of pieces you've worked on that are really tailored towards the games industry and have those to show, and that'll really help you out as an artist. The really interesting thing about the games industry is it changes very fast. So what's my dream today might not be my dream tomorrow. At the moment I'm very interested in social games. By social games I mean games I'm playing with other people, with shared goals where we can cooperate to do things. The idea of that's fascinating to me. Um, as far as hopes and dreams for the future go, well, I really think it might involve me owning a small Pacific island with a fantastic internet connection. <laughs>
Oh, what does that smell? Yes, and it actually works in Windows 7 too, but it's a bit trickier to get working and we don't really have the time to go through it step by step. But if you do a search for Star Wars ASCII Windows 7, there are a few guides that you should be... I can't, I can't go any further without dealing with this. <laughs> You're not going to have a look what's inside. Okay. A <laughs> curiosity. Oh! Ah! oh, it's gross. Oh. <laughs> Let's move on to this now from the best gamer in the gaming world. Please answer or I would become buy a Xbox 360 and smash it with my dad's hammer. Well, here is my question. Is there a voice command game for the Kinect or Xbox 360? P.S. Hex is the best. Bajo is cool. Darren sucks at singing. P.S.S. Hex is awesome at high-fiving. Bajo should take high-fiving lessons. <laughs> it's not a Kinect game, but I'd say Tom Clancy's End War is the most advanced voice-controlled game around, so far anyway. It's a strategy game where you can play just by giving voice commands and it actually works really well. Other than that, there aren't many games with voice commands at this moment, but since it's one of the things Kinect is apparently really good at, I'm sure we'll be seeing a few more to come in the future. I know Forza 4 will let you navigate around the menus using voice commands, for example. And us Aussies will be getting voice recognition on our 360s by Christmas. Right, well, moving on to this one from mystery viewers somewhere in the Northern Territory. Who could it be? It's a mystery. That's just Good game. I was watching your other show and at the end you showed you guys stuffing up. Please show more of that. No. Oh, come on, Bajo. Bloopers are funny. I mean, let's show the spawn some. Okay, but only if they're all of Darren and none of me. <laughs> and I am Darren, data analyzing robot for the ruthless extermination of noobs. Um, uh, little help? There. Let's see if you can beat my high. Oh, that's the tenth one this week. Yeah. I can't help it if you're slow, Dan. <laughs> oh, we <because> got Dan! <laughs> <laughs> now remember, make sure you do your business outside. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> 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 It's a simple game where you use just two buttons to make your robot unicorn dump and. That's right, and we Plus, talk. we meet the sport of Australia in another exciting documentary segment. That was too long, sorry. <laughs> How do I send you guys letters? Ooh, confused. Let's do that without laughing. I'm really good. See, they're not funny at all. <laughs> well, I think we have time for just one more quick one from Giant Joe in Turian Bay, Western Australia. Hey, good game. Love your show. And could you please, please, please answer my question? Do you update your Minecraft world on your website? Well, we weren't planning on doing regular updates of it, but just because you are so nicely, we put up the latest version on our website and you can grab it now. We've readjusted some of the powered rail sections so our rail goes a bit faster. And we've built a giant pyramid of mystery and doom. You can find it just a short walk off to the left of our main house. But we should warn you. Ah, uh, Hex! No warnings. But the spawnings are going to want to go in there. Yeah, and they'll find out for themselves what's inside. Don't spoil the... fun. Okay, but you can answer all the emails. And on that note, we're actually out of time for this week. And don't forget, if you've got any questions bugging you, you can bug us with them here. Now you're cleaning that up. I'm not touching that it. That is gross. I'm not touching it. Not to mention unhygienic. No. Sports such as tennis, basketball or soccer often have games released every year, but it's not that often we see a rugby union game. Indeed, it's been four years since the last one, but to coincide with the Rugby World Cup which has just kicked off in New Zealand, HB Studios, who also developed the previous Rugby 08, has developed a new game. Rugby World Cup 2011 is pretty much your standard licensed game. There's the World Cup tournament mode where you face off in pools of five for the Webb Ellis Trophy, a warm-up tour mode where you can travel to different regions of the world with your team to prepare for the actual World Cup, and an international friendly mode which provides single matches between teams. There are 20 teams to choose from as well as a selection of stadiums from around the world. Graphically, the game is a little bit lacklustre to look at compared to other sports games of this generation. The crowd reactions are limited and the player models are a little bit mediocre. It's not ugly, but you do feel as though it's not on par with games like FIFA or NBA Live. Gameplay includes a combination of button mashing and low-level tactics in a free-flowing arcade style of rugby. For anyone who's played previous rugby games from HB Studios, the control system will feel very familiar. 
There are set plays available, but I never really understood how to use them, so it was just more fun running around. On the Welsh 22 now. I had the biggest issue with the lack of a training mode. I mean, if you've never played a rugby game before, then you kind of just have to jump in and learn the controls. I mean, this meant constant switching to the menus to memorise buttons. It's not much fun. Mm, the devs did include one in goal shootout mode, but it felt really out of place, and I would have much rather had a practice mode instead, especially if they included something to teach you how to use tactics or set plays. Even if you know all the rules and control systems, the worst thing is that you can't change the default controls at all, which is very annoying for my robot scoops. Yeah, so maybe you should get some opposable thumbs, Darren. Well, maybe you should get some new jokes. Oh, sweet burn. Well, at least, at least I'm not wearing a soccer shirt in a rugby union review, and now you dropped your ball. It's all falling apart. <laughs> oh, my ball. Well, I'll get it for you, Darren. Mm. Oh, thank you. There you go. So far, this game has been pretty average, but once you get into a match, it's it's quite fun. Like, ridiculously fun, actually. Especially when you're playing multiplayer with your friends, you tend to just forgive the graphics, the controls, and the match just takes over. I agree, Hex. The multiplayer is really fun, and you almost don't expect it because this game is missing a lot of things that we've come to expect from other sports games. Even the stupid bits, like players not doing what you want them to do or missing tackles, actually works into the entertainment value of a match. Although, a couple of things did annoy me during the matches. It's infinitely easier playing offence than defence. Offensive players change direction too easily, which makes it hard to tackle. And the constantly switching camera can just make your head hurt. I think none of these issues are a deal breaker, just occasionally frustrating. It's like the developer just didn't put enough thought into the little things, so the game feels a bit unpolished. However, there is one thing which might be a deal breaker for many of the spoilings out there. Affirmative, Bajo. Rugby World Cup 2011 has only licensed 10 of the 20 teams in the competition, and the Australian and New Zealand teams are not included. This means that although you can still play as a Wallaby or an All Black, the rosters are completely made up, the player likenesses are incorrect, and the uniform isn't official. Just like mine. For purist rugby fans, this is terrible news. I mean, what's the point if you can't play as your favourite player? Especially for a World Cup that only happens every four years. Well, there is a rugby challenge game coming out in September, which has licensed the teams for New Zealand and Australia, but it doesn't have the licences for the teams included in this game or the World Cup tournament. Well, we had the briefest of looks at rugby challenge, and on the surface it looks like it has better graphics and quite different gameplay, so we might take a closer look at that in the next couple of weeks. And despite all the bad stuff, Rugby World Cup is actually quite fun once you start getting into the matches, and it all works fine, but it just didn't feel like a complete game, so I'm giving it 5 out of 10 rubber chickens. I had fun as well, Hex, and the game isn't too bad if you're playing with friends. I think if you're a die-hard rugby union fan, then you'll want a bit more complexity than this, but I'm giving it 6 out of 10 rubber chickens. Darren, you seem to know your stuff. Is there a robot rugby team playing this year? Sadly, no, but I have been busily coaching a professional player. He's going to be very good, and he's well on his way to becoming a wallaby. Really? Who is it? Remember, Goose, it's the eye of the tiger and the thrill of the fight. Darren, I'm from Melbourne. We play AFL, so I, I don't really know the rules. You're going to have to explain them. Let's start with tackling practice. He fakes left. He thinks about faking left, but I thought about him thinking about faking left. Ha-ha! I predicted that, too. Nice goose step, Goose. Darren. Now this is called a ruck. Darren, can you please get off? It's the only way you'll learn. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode of Spawn Point, but we shall return next week. And what's in store for the Spawnlings, Hex? Some good news, actually. You know how us Aussies couldn't play LEGO Universe? Yeah. Well, now we can. What's happened? They've made it free to play, so we can play it. Hmm. Although that might just mean that no one's playing it anymore and it's total rubbish and they're just desperately trying to get people into it. Well, yeah, maybe. But we'll know next week, won't we? <laughs> And Goose is off again on his quest for answers, and this time it's how a game disc is actually made. <laughs> Cute outfit, Goose. Well, don't forget to drop by the forums and leave a post about the show or your gaming. Maybe vote in our online poll. Till next week, gamers, may all your games be good ones. Hex out. Budger out. Darren out. Say, Darren, are you going to post us back to Do Ninja now? What?
Well, don't injure the spawnling that made him. Uh, negative. I'm sure he'd like it back, though. Uh, uh negative. Oh, Darren, have you become quite fond of him as your little friend? Uh, uh, negative! Oh, Darren's in love! love. Oh, Darren. I hardly need to remind you that robots are incapable of feeling weak human emotions. Oh, well, in that case, you don't mind if we just take them and post them? Uh, 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 put uh, down! Uh, come back! Let's <laughs> charging my laser! All right, you can keep him. There, there, Derp. That was fun.